If you are invested or you know anyone who is invested in fossil fuel generation in Europe this year, tell them to sell. It doesn't matter if they're going to make a massive loss because those losses will only get bigger and bigger and bigger. This is the year of hell for fossil fuels in Europe. It is the year when fossil will decline at an incredible rate. People just, they don't realize there's a perfect storm coming. I call it the perfect trifecta. Three things are combining. They're basically going to combine to create an insane situation that will destroy fossil fuels. Basically like firing a nuclear weapon into the fossil fuel establishment is going to cause tremendous pain. This is the year, my friends, when we will say bye-bye, sayonara, so long, we don't miss you. Now it's time for the world, it's time for Europe to move on to something better. Vlad Putin, Vladimir, whatever you want to be called, thank you, my friend, because you pretty much were the architect of all of this, you made this happen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Am I a big fan of Vladimir Putin? No, not really. Not at all. But to be fair, I mean, this massive revolution, this move away from fossil fuels in Europe to the point where we can see the writing is on the wall very clearly for coal and gas in Europe, it wouldn't have happened at anywhere near this speed without Vladimir Putin. Now, I'm, to be honest, I'm not saying, hey, um, this has really been a good thing. In a lot of ways, it hasn't. People in Ukraine have suffered. Lots of people have suffered. Even people in the Russian army and their, their families have suffered as well. And I don't really like that. In fact, I hate that. It sucks. But there is a bright side to it all. And that is that fossil fuels are being phased out in Europe. And watching this revolution happen, is frankly astonishing. I'm really enjoying seeing fossil fuels die at this kind of pace, the pace that absolutely nobody predicted. Now, I just want to say a big thank you, big shout out right now, especially right now to our channel Patreons and YouTube members. You guys basically are helping keep me here, keeping things afloat for me right now. Things have been crazy over the past, well, the past two months really since we found out uh, that diagnosis. And I'm here with my boys. It has been challenging to be a single dad for a little while and um, you know, look after them and try and make sure that they are getting enough exercise and getting uh, getting everything they need, really. And I don't think I've been doing the best job. I've got, to, I've got to improve. It's really not that easy. You know, it does give me some empathy for people who do this and do this for years. And so I've got nothing to complain about, but it's been more challenging because I've been moving house. I've moved house from two houses to one house. Now I've got to move to another place to store a lot of our stuff in a container. And then I'll be filming from Thailand. It's going to be interesting as well. Now, getting back to this issue here, wind and solar generated a record one fifth or 22% of electricity in the European Union in 2022, which is a good number, but it's not as good as what we're going to see this year. In fact, it's nothing compared to what we will see this year. But it overtook fossil gas for the first time at 20%, according to a new study. Energy think tank Ember's analysis or European electricity revealed that coal power share increased by only 1.5 percentage points to generate 16% of Europe's electricity in 2022. This means that with year-on-year -year falls in the last four months of 2022, Europe prevented a threatened return to coal power in the wake of the 2022 energy crisis. Dave Jones, head of Data Insights at Ember, said this. Europe has avoided the worst of the energy crisis. The shocks of 2022 only caused a minor ripple in coal power and a huge wave of support for renewables. Any fears of a coal rebound are now dead. Electric says that record wind and solar growth have occurred in Europe, and there's just no stopping them now. Now that it's sort of like you get a little taste for how much better renewables are, you kind of go, well, why are we paying more? Why are we paying more for the alternative? Why do, why do we keep doing this? It doesn't make sense. Europe faced a triple crisis in the electricity sector in 2022, according to Ember. As Europe scrambled to cut ties with Russia, its largest fossil gas supplier, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine 
it faced the lowest levels of hydro and nuclear in the last 20 years. And that created a deficit equal to 7% of Europe's total electricity demand in 2022. As a result, electricity prices increased pretty substantially. I want to remind you of this. It's very easy to see that number. Electricity prices going up. Ah, renewables must be the cause. Not the case. Remember, correlation does not necessarily imply causation. The truth is here that many places around the world where they use renewable energy primarily as their primary energy source, their electricity is cheaper. That's a global average. The average globally is that in countries that use more renewable energy, electricity is in fact cheaper. I can give you those numbers one day. I'll put them together. But record wind. As for Europe, record wind and solar growth helped cushion the hydro and nuclear deficit. Solar rose the fastest, growing a record 39 terawatt hours, or 24% in 2022. That's twice its previous record, which helped to avoid 10 billion euros in gas costs. 20 EU countries set new solar records in 2022, but this year, it's going to be completely different. Panel prices have come down 30% already over the past two months, 30%. There's a price war going on between the three biggest solar panel manufacturers in the world. In fact, experts are saying panel prices will come down by 50% this year. Does that mean will the cost of solar energy come down by 50%? No, it doesn't. Because, of course, you need inverters, you need to install them. There's all these other costs involved. But it does mean costs will come down very, very significantly, meaning solar will be the cheapest form of energy this year, hands down. And that includes adding battery packs to the calculations. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go and install masses of battery storage as a result. You don't need to. You generally only need about four to five hours of energy storage. The CEO of Solar Power in Europe said this, solar is stepping up right when Europe needs it the most. These new numbers show that rapid solar growth is truly the foundation of the world's energy transition. In 2023, with the right support, solar will break more records, reduce fossil energy demand further, and take us one year closer to a 100% renewable Europe. Now, countries such as Germany have changed their plans. They've basically said, well, you know what? We can get to 90% renewables by 2029. That is amazing. Lower electricity demand also helped reduce the deficit. EU electricity demand dropped by 7.9%. That's not 79%, that's 7.9% in the last quarter of 2022 compared to the same period the previous year. Mild weather played a big part, along with affordability pressures, energy efficiency improvements, and EU citizens actively cutting energy in response to the crisis in Ukraine. Just one-sixth of the nuclear and hydro deficit was met by coal. Now, the interesting thing is, let's just go back there a bit. How is it, right? How is it that in 2022, well over a million electric cars were sold, well over a million electric cars were sold in Europe, and yet, there was a decline in energy use of 8%. I mean, all the people who hate EVs would be saying, that's impossible. This must be a global conspiracy. This is just the energy renewable freaks making this data up. It's all fake, I tell you. If there's more EVs, then the grid's going to die. It's going to burn in hell and we're all going to go to, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to us all. Something crazy. Something terrible. Well, my friends, crazy, isn't it? Way more than 1 million EVs were sold in Europe, and yet energy use went down by 8%. Coal generation rose by 7%, and as a result, EU power sector emissions rose by 3.9% in 2022 compared to 2021. But you can look at that one way, or you can look at it another, and that is wind, solar, and a fall in electricity demand prevented a much larger return to coal. So contextually, coal's rise was inconsequential or unsubstantial. It remained below 2018 levels and added only 0.3% to global coal generation. Coal power in the EU fell in all four of the final months of 2022. And that's even in, that's even in winter. I mean, that's the winter period, right? And yet, coal generation fell for all four of those months, down 6% year on year. The 26 coal units placed on emergency standby for winter ran at an average of just 18% capacity. In other words, they're making hundreds of millions of dollars of losses. 
Despite importing 22 million tons of extra coal throughout 2022, the EU only used one third of it. In other words, they've got all this coal sitting there just doing nothing. Surprisingly, fossil gas generation was almost unchanged, 0.8% in 2022 compared to 2021, despite record high prices. Gas generated 20% of the EU's electricity in 2022, up from 19% the previous year. However, this will change drastically in 2023. In 2023, all of this will change. Gas is going to plunge this year, says Electric. In 2023, Europe's wind and solar transition will speed up in response to the energy crisis and hydro and French nuclear will recover. So fossil fuel generation will drop by approximately 20% this year. The previous record from 2020 was also 20%, which was a result pretty much of coronavirus. However, coal generation will fall, fossil gas generation will fall, and the year of 2023 will be the year that renewable energy took Europe by storm. What's going to happen this year is the continued decreases in the cost of renewable energy. Remember, even the cost of wind generation is going down significantly as well. The cost of battery packs are going down. It's going to be a perfect freaking storm. I mean, this is the year of hell for fossil fuels in Europe. I cannot say this strongly enough. Think about it. We've got solar coming down up to 50% in panel prices. We've got wind generation coming down by approximately 11%. We've got the cost of batteries coming down drastically. We've got what? We've got this perfect storm of batteries. Look at these batteries we've got. We've got new lithium ion phosphate battery check coming down. The prices of those packs are coming down because now we're moving away from lithium ternary batteries to lithium ion phosphate, which give you twice as many cycles. Plus, they're significantly cheaper to buy in the first place, making the whole the whole equation mathematically so much better. It's a perfect storm. It's a trifecta. Wind, solar, batteries, all coming in at once to destroy fossil fuels for good. Bye-bye, my friends. I will not miss you. Thank you for watching.